Hello, my lovely Rose Garden. This is Avalon. And Ray. And we're back with whiny bitch tits McGee <laughs> for chapter four of Throne of Glass. And this is going to be probably the whiniest chapter yet. Oh, oh no. If you thought she was insufferable before, just wait. <laughs> but before that, I just want to make a quick note here that... I don't want to come off as one of those douchey, fucking, fantasy, elitist assholes who's like, oh, you can only do the established tropes and never venture off the beaten path with fantasy or yeah. D&D style things. Yeah. Like, absolutely have fun with it. Bend the rules, tweak the rules, throw the rules out the window if you fucking want to. Um, but the problem I'm having with this is that I have very high doubts that Sarah J. Mass is even aware of what the quote-unquote rules are. Um, it's giving Stephanie Mayer saying that Bella did more research on vampires than she did. Yeah, like, okay, maybe it's because I come from an artist background, not a writer background, so... This is more how I generally think about things, but one of the main rules about being an artist is you have to know the rules before you can break them. And the same holds true for writing. Yeah. So I, I assume that's just kind of how it goes in uh, creative endeavors, just in general. Like, you have to know the general rules of a a world or a genre in order to then subvert them successfully because otherwise you just end up writing something that just feels like feels like you didn't bother to do your due diligence yeah in the genre it's not how well can you learn and stick to the rules it's how much did you study the rules so that you know when and where and how to break them to successfully yeah. convey your point? Exactly. Um, and I'm not getting that, right? Because we're going to go back to this all throughout this book with Selena being an assassin. The point of an assassin is to be stealthy, to not be extremely well known yeah. this idea that everyone knows her name but they don't know that she's a young girl again just takes her out of the world because one would assume that selena is not a gender neutral or masculine name yeah when we've got kaol and dorian yeah and you know very western european sounding dynamics yeah. of what feminine and masculine sound like yeah if I heard the name Selena, I would assume AFAB or yeah. female or you know, woman. Yeah. yeah. That, that's what that gives me. So this idea that no one is aware that she's a woman, despite having an extremely feminine sounding name in Western European or tradition. just like a young girl. But I, I, I think if she was a well-known assassin... Like, her name would be less known than the fact that she's a young woman. Yeah. Like, people being all like, oh, I would understand more people being all like, oh, did you know about this, you know, mysterious young woman assassin? That would honestly be more understandable for, like, you know, a famous assassin than people knowing her actual Le legal quote unquote name. <laughs> yeah, one would assume that she would have many aliases yeah. if she is the type of assassin who is sneaking in close to the target through cordial means and mm -hmm. then quietly dispatching them once they're alone together. Yeah. Which is, you know, if you want to make her the femme fatale character, that's fine, but that is not the style of assassinry that she has purported herself to be an expert in. Yeah. Because she's talking about taking down six armed guards. Yeah. And, you know, it's it doesn't... The math ain't mathing. Yeah. Also, be very careful if you end up moving your chair, because Winnie is just 
right? Winnie's so cute. Winnie's so cute. I wish you guys could see her. She's just laying on the ground, just looking all dejected. I look behind me and the mice are getting all snuggly to sleep and bothered because we're in the room. <laughs> the recording room is also the pet room. So we get to see all the animals. I mean, Winnie obviously follows us everywhere, but yeah. Anyway. Anyway, on to chapter four. Mm. Do what you want, but do it well. Yeah, pretty much. When Selena finally collapsed onto a bed after her meeting in the throne room, she couldn't fall asleep, despite the exhaustion in every inch of her body. After being roughly bathed by brutish servants, the wounds on her back throbbed and her face felt like it had been scrubbed to the bone. Shifting to lie on her side to ease the pain in her dressed and bound back, she ran her hand down the mattress and blinked at the freeness of movement. Before she'd got into the bath, Kaol had removed her shackles. She'd felt everything, the reverberations of the key turning in the lock of her irons, then again as they loosened and fell to the floor. She could still feel the ghost chains hovering just above her skin. Looking up at the ceiling, she rotated her raw, burning joints and gave a sigh of contentment. But it was too strange to lie on a mattress, to have silk caress her skin and a pillow cradle her cheek. She had forgotten what food other than soggy oats and hard bread tasted like, what a clean body and clothes could do to a person. Now it was utterly foreign. And I'm like, okay, I'm with you so far. Mm -hmm. Because this is a known phenomenon that people who get used to harsh conditions yeah. can oftentimes have a hard time readjusting to yeah. things like a soft mattress, um, yeah. good food, things yeah. like that. And then we're going to throw all of that directly out the window. Oh, no. Though her dinner hadn't been that wonderful. Uh, Not only was the roast chicken unimpressive, but after a few forkfuls, she dashed into the bathroom to deposit the contents of her stomach. Oh, delightful. She'd wanted to eat, to put a hand to a swollen belly, to wish that she'd never eaten a morsel and swear she'd never eat again. She'd eat well in rift hold, wouldn't she? And more importantly, her stomach would adjust. So, you know, we're just going to take that whole, this potential good character moment of her revealing to us what is her accustomed, you know, what was she accustomed to before end of year? Yeah. How well did she eat previously? What were her favorite foods? Um, what is the style of cuisine in this world? Mm -hmm. Any any amount of world building detail or character building detail we could have gotten is just thrown back to what we already know about her, which is that she's a spoiled brat. And this roast chicken, which is a pretty non-offensive well, meal. Like, okay, I, I could understand her throwing it up because she has been subsisting on soggy oats and hard bread. Roast chicken being a very savory meal would likely come right back up if she's not if she doesn't kind of slowly acclimate to other foods but the fact that she's all like oh but it wasn't that good i'm all like like did you did you <laughs> throw up because you're not able to handle that much protein at this time or did you throw up because you're being a bitch you know I like know, and man. you just didn't like how it tasted i don't know man but even then and maybe it's just me coming from my fucking American-ass background, but I think of chicken in general as kind of one of the easier proteins to digest. It's a white meat. Um, it's usually lower in calories than a lot of other meats. It's not tough, mm. usually. I mean, it, could, it might be a little bit dry, but... Yeah. Because when she says roast chicken, I'm not imagining, like, a roast chicken with lots of spices and accoutrement mm. i'm thinking of just here we cooked this chicken you, the chicken is no longer raw eat this plain chicken which I, is I, something that i do see, to recover my, after i've been sick my thought is just like the rotisserie chickens that they sell at the supermarket the whole ones see i'm not even thinking of that because to my knowledge they're still at end of year like she's just yeah, in but, a nicer place yeah like you're in a palace so or of some sort so they would have like decent yeah. food uh, well if they gave her something with a ton of spices that's on them they, they should they probably better. didn't but like 
even so, like, it's just, I don't know. The attitude with with, with, with it's written, though. Yeah. The, that word. It's like, you, this is this is apparently the first time you've eaten anything but uh, soggy oats and hard bread for a year. Um, I... I think that roast chicken was the greatest food ever, and I don't even like chicken at all. Uh, I would have had to have a bucket under me from how much drool. <laughs> like, even if... if it was the driest fucking chicken that I had ever put in my mouth, I'd still be all like, damn, it's different than soggy oats and hard bread. <laughs> Amazing. And, again, and, you know, again, it's probably just me, but going back to... After I have been, like, severely ill, like, stomach flu sick, mm. plain chicken is, like, the first big protein that I am usually able to consume mm. without feeling sick again. Yeah. So, th- that's probably why this is so weird to me, that she would throw that up. I'm just like, wow, you're really a bitch, like, oh, but, but she it wasn't is, that good. She is being a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Ready for the the, uh, thumbnail? Mm -hmm. I remember this. She'd wasted away to nothing. Beneath her nightgown, her ribs reached out from inside of her, showing bones where flesh and meat should have been. And her breasts! Her breasts! (laughs) Once well-formed, they were now no larger than they'd been in the midst of puberty. Um, she's 17. You're still in the midst of puberty, bitch. Yeah, I'm like, your puberty will be going until 25. (laughs) A lump clogged her throat, which she promptly swallowed down. The softness of the of the mattress smothered her, and she shifted again, lying on her back, despite the pain it gave her. And again, I'm going to pause. Because I do want to acknowledge that dysphoria and dysmorphia are absolutely things mm-hmm. that cis people can feel in certain situations. It's not the same as how yeah. trans and non-binary and other feel it, but... You could have done something with this, with, you know, her looking in the mirror and not really recognizing the person looking back at her after but, this harrowing experience. But let's be real, that's not what Sarah J. Mass is going for. But she's, literally, she's just, my titties! <laughs> my titties are small now because I'm undernourished. <laughs> oh no, I'm less attractive than usual because I have small tits, which, fuck you, firstly. <laughs> All tits are good tits. <laughs> there is no tit that is better than any other tit. Yep. So fuck you for that. Um, tits are just good. Good job, tits. <laughs> her face hadn't been much better when she glimpsed it in the washroom mirror. Uh huh. So again, we jump back to the she wasted away to nothing beneath her. Not like. We're talking in the, this is actively happening right now, and then we go back to her face hadn't been much better. Just, once again, these very so it, amateur writing mistakes. And I'll admit that before I had a proper editor, I did make mistakes like this. Yeah. And then I got a fucking proper editor. Um, shout out to Alana Mugden, the realist of all time. Yeah. The Shifting Roots manuscript is looking real fucked up from all the notes <laughs> that are in it. I need to get on that. Gotta love it. But it's good because it makes it better. The writing is so much cleaner and clearer after my editor gets done with it. And I am always astounded with the speed at which she does this work. Yeah. Who the fuck edited this? (laughs) That's a very obvious tense shift there. Just without changing the setting or anything like that. Just... Just switch around those tenses. Who cares? <laughs> yeah, like, I guess, you know, she's in the bed, and then we're thinking back to when she looked in the mirror, but again, we should have just had these scenes. Yeah. We should have had this reaction yeah, of her like, seeing herself. Why Why is all of this written in, in flashback? Yeah. Like, this entire book is all, like, the chapter starts after everything that the chapter is about happened. (laughs) Yeah, like, we're getting a summary of the dinner. We're getting a summary of her reaction to first appearing, you know, her room, um, and seeing herself in the mirror. And I hope that that goes away as we go on. I'm not sure it will. I I don't have my hopes up. I'm going to have to stop commenting on the tense shifts, though, because I get the feeling they're going to happen a lot. 
Yeah. So just be prepared for those. Be prepared for me to go, wait, what the fuck? And you'll know that the tense has shifted. <laughs> it was haggard. Her cheekbones... Yeah. What the fuck? Okay, mm -hmm. anyway. Her cheekbones were sharp, her jaw pronounced, and her eyes slightly, but ever so disturbingly sunken in. Oh no, her sharp cheekbones, her strong jaw, hideous. <laughs> the eyes being sunken in is the only part of this that sounds objectively maybe not attractive. And again, thinking about everything else that we have just discussed, and like the food, and not being accustomed to nice things, and her primary concern is once again what she looks like it's like girl you've been in prison for a year like starving and working yourself to the bone maybe just enjoy the fact that like you're not doing that right now i'd also probably be like take a moment <laughs> oh fuck i'm really emaciated how am i gonna survive this contest yeah that would be my chief concern how am i gonna get back into shape to win this thing that is probably gonna be a to the death kind of thing Mm. Since they're having thieves and shit compete. Yeah. For freedom. <laughs> you know. Freedom. But no, nah, um, we're going to have some A-cup angst. And oh no, my face isn't as hot as it was. <laughs> um, not in the interesting way of exploring more More over, okay, if she is this emaciated, why hasn't her hair fallen out? No, no, it's still long. It's Beautiful. still long and flowing. I'm all like, the hair's one of the first things to go if you start not taking care of yourself. No, she's just got to be, like, skinny. But, like, she can't be proud of the fact that she's skinny because we don't want her to be too skinny because then it sounds like we're promoting eating disorders. But she is very skinny, make no mistake. She is skinny but also extremely strong. Mm -hmm. Okay, don't forget that part. Yeah, she's strong and she has long flowing hair, but she is she's very skinny. Very skinny. She took steadying breaths, savoring the hope. She'd eat a lot and exercise. She could be healthy again. Imagining outrageous feasts and regaining her former glory, she finally fell asleep. You know, there it is. It should have come first. Yeah, when, took us a while. When Kaol came to fetch her the next morning, she found... Sorry, he found her sleeping on the floor, wrapped in a blanket. Sardothian, he said. She made a mumbling noise, burying her face farther into the pillow. Why are you sleeping on the ground? She opened an eye. Of course he didn't mention how different she looked now that she was clean. Why would he? Yeah, why would he do that? Why would he care? She didn't bother concealing herself with the blanket as she stood. The yards of fabric they called a nightgown covered her enough. The bed was uncomfortable, she said simply, but quickly forgot the captain as she beheld the sunlight. Pure, fresh, warm sunlight. Sunlight that she could bask in day after day if she got her freedom. Sunlight to drown out the endless dark of the mines. It leaked in through the heavy drape, smearing itself across the room in thick lines. Gingerly, Selena stretched out a hand. Her hand was pale, almost skeletal. But there was something about it, something beyond the bruises and cuts and scars, that seemed beautiful and new in the morning light. She ran to the window and nearly ripped the curtains from their hangings as she opened them to the gray mountains and bleakness of Endovir. The guards positioned beneath the window didn't glance upward, and she gaped at the bluish-gray sky, at the clouds slipping on their shoes, at the clouds shipping, slipping on their shoes and shuffling toward the horizon. What the fuck? What the fuck metaphor was that? I, was, I got lost. I had to stop because I wasn't sure. You know, points for originality. I have never heard anyone describe the clouds movement as slipping on their shoes and shuffling toward the horizon. And I hope I never do again. <laughs> Wild. I will not be afraid. For the first time in a while, the words the felt first true. first time in forever. <laughs> and again, I'm just the mood whiplash. Oh, for the first time in a while, it feels true. All you have shown us of this character is that she is overconfident and snarky. The fuck? <sighs> Her lips peeled into a smile. The captain raised an eyebrow but said nothing. 
She was cheerful, jubilant, really, and her mood improved when the servants coiled her braided hair onto the back of her head and dressed her in a surprisingly fine riding habit that concealed her miserably thin form. She loved clothes, loved the feeling of silk, of velvet, of satin, of suede and chiffon, and was fascinated by the grace of seams, the intricate perfection of an embossed surface. surface bleh. And when she won this ridiculous competition, when she was free, she could buy all the clothes she wanted. Okay, not gonna shit on this detail, because hey, it's a nice character detail. Mm -hmm. She's into fashion. There is nothing wrong with being a girly girl. Mm -hmm. A girly assassin is actually a fun character. In fact, I was in the shower earlier, and I was just like, could you imagine a D&D &D campaign where just, they're all Barbie? I need that. I need that in my life. I would pay money to see... I need Barbie Necromancer. Yeah, like, I need... This Barbie raises the dead. <laughs> this Barbie communes with animals. <laughs> this Barbie goes into a blind rage. Like, I would kill for this. This Barbie serves a dark god. <laughs> it would be great to have an all-Barbie D&D &D campaign. And, and I'm sure it's been done. And they're all of... They all need to be, like, endlessly positive and cheerful and uplifting yeah, for like, each other. No, it is Barbie. Yes. A hundred percent. In every role is... There's a bard Barbie, there's a necromancer Barbie, there's a warlock Barbie, there's a thief or rogue Barbie, there's a warrior Barbie. There's a paladin Barbie. There's an <laughs> artificer Barbie. <laughs> like, they're all Barbie, and so is the big bad. Yes. And it's basically legally blonde D&D. &D. Okay, but what if the big bad is... She's, she's only the only bad... Because she doesn't have other Barbies around. Oh my god. And and when she sees the Barbies coming up to confront her, she's like, oh my gosh, you guys. I've been so lonely. <laughs> There's no one here that really gets me. <laughs> this Barbie is a dragon. This Barbie is a dragon. She hoards shoes. <laughs> I'm down Tiny for it. plastic shoes. I am 100% here for this. Like, the problem is not, oh, she's girly and likes clothes and cares about her appearance. The problem is that... Assassin. Okay? Like, be an assassin. Okay? Be serious for five seconds. I'm just over here, like, this would make a, lo a lot more sense, like, as a character detail, if she was established to be, like we said, the femme fatale type, where you know, she would have to kind of know these things for, yeah. the sake, for the sake of her job, like sneaking into court and slashing some senator's throat. Or if she was, going back to this, a political prisoner yeah. who was accustomed to these things. I'm still 100% she's going to be some kind of lost princess or something. Like, it, it doesn't make as much sense if she was like, you know, this fighter for the common people freedom fighter type, which is, you know, what up until now she has been like. Yeah, because so, she hates the nobility. She hates the nobility, so she wouldn't really... Uh... She hates the nobility, but she, all of her interests and attitude align with her being nobility. It's very much the same kind of vibe where, like, you know how in Fifty Shades of Grey there's, like, a bunch of wealth porn? Like, the main porn in Fifty Shades of Grey is the wealth porn? I'm familiar. And, yeah. Um, and so it, it's kind of like that in that, you know, you have this character who is like, oh, like, I don't need all these fancy things. And, you know, kind of thinks it's 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 gauche and garish and don't don't give me these things but she still really likes it and it's it's just that kind of you know protest too much kind of thing yeah it's like oh you're gonna shit on the nobility but you you sure love all their stuff yeah and you don't seem to care that much about the common people because every single time she's described any member of the peasant class has been with disdain once again, a character that was born five minutes before the book opened. Yeah, I'm like, what is your socioeconomic status, bitch? What is your tax bracket? 
She laughed when Kaol irked at how Selena stood in front of the mirror for five minutes, admiring herself, half dragged her out of the room. Hmm. There's a subject-verb disagreement in there somewhere. The budding sky made her want to dance and skip down the halls before they entered the main yard. However, she faltered as she beheld the mounds of bone-colored rock at the far end of the compound, and the small figures going in and out of the many mouth-like holes cut into the mountains. This hole was made for me. (laughs) Work had already begun for the day, work that would continue without her when she left them all to this miserable fate. Her stomach clenching, Selena averted her eyes from the prisoners, keeping up with the captain as they headed down to a caravan of horses near the towering wall. This momentary guilt, I'm sure, will pass very quickly. See, and one of our patrons in the patron discord, which you can access for only $2 (laughs) a month by clicking on the link in the description, um, actually outlined a really cool way that this could have been done, where he said that, like, hey, what if her, like, super cool badass establishing moment was not that she had almost escaped, but that she through knowing that all of the attention of the guards was going to be focused on her, Mm -hmm. facilitated the escape of the rest of the prisoners. Yeah. And then we would understand that she is cunning, she is observant, and we understand that she is on the side of the people. Yeah. um, Because presumably, most of these slaves in this mine, if we are to believe her viewpoint of the nobility are probably there for these these are probably not the meanest and worst people in the land yeah um so yeah so he just pointed that out and he and i'm like yeah that would have been way cooler yeah (laughs) that that would have been really awesome i'm sure most of what our delightful patrons will suggest as rewrites for this book will be a thousand times better than what it actually is because we have a very creative group of people in our discord that you can talk to if you just join for two (laughs) dollars a month and you will get access to the exclusive patron channels if you just want access to the discord server in general you can get that by following Roslyn Books on Patreon for free. Yep. So, hey, at least you'll have access to pictures of Winnie and discussions about my books. Mm-hmm. And then if you want that, that exclusive, it's just $2 a month, baby. Moving on. Yeah, that's, think... that's way less than a tank of gas. <laughs> that's like three tanks of gas where we live. <laughs> Yapping filled the air. Oh, it's us. And three black dogs sprinted from the center of the caravan to greet them. They were each sleek as arrows, undoubtedly from the crown prince's kennels. She knelt on one knee, her bound wounds protesting as she cupped their heads and stroked their smooth hair. They licked her fingers and face, their tails slashing the ground like whips. A pair of ebony boots stopped before her, and the dogs immediately calmed and sat. Selena lifted her gaze to find the sapphire eyes of the crown prince of Adderland studying her face. He smiled lightly. How unusual for them to notice you, he said, scratching one of the dogs behind the ears. Did you give them food? They're dogs. She shook her head as... It's a new person. (laughs) Yeah, what the fuck? (laughs) She shook her head as the captain stepped behind her, so close that his knee grazed the folds of her forest green velvet cape. It would take all of two movements to disarm him. Are you fond of dogs? asked the prince. She nodded. Why was it already so hot? That's a non sequitur. Am I going to be blessed with the pleasure of hearing your voice, or have you resolved to be silent for the duration of our journey? I'm afraid your question didn't merit a verbal response. Dorian bowed low. Then I apologize, my lady. How terrible it must be to condescend to answer. Next time, I'll try to think of something more stimulating to say. Okay, um, maybe this is just the pedant within me, but... There is absolutely no way that a crown prince should be bowing to a peasant, let alone a prisoner. That's like a big... Maybe it's just because I am I know about... I'm, I have an obsessive encyclopedic knowledge of etiquette. But for a crowned monarch to bow even jokingly to someone... 
is like a big deal. Yeah, that's, you're not supposed to do that. That's a big no-no. <laughs> that's a real big no-no. Even if you're doing it sarcastically, like. It, it, my my brain goes back to the to the part in Mulan near the very end where the emperor bows to Mulan and everyone immediately like has to slam down to their knees because yeah like it's a big fucking deal your your head can't be higher than the crowned monarch generally if you're in a situation where you're around a crowned monarch uh their desk throne whatever is usually on kind of like a pedestal area like on steps so that their head is always above everyone else's it's it's kind of a weird it's mystic, a big deal. mystical old thing but you know it, it goes back to divine right to rule and all that y you know it's just a, it's a big deal either way that shouldn't happen yeah. stop that <laughs> <laughs> which once again fine to break the rules Know what the fucking rules are first. Yeah. Because like, K.L. should absolutely be having a fucking reaction to this. Yeah, he needs to get down on his knees if he's doing if the, if the prince is bowing even his head. And also he should just be like, Dorian, Dorian, what the fuck? <laughs> Dorian, stop that. Stop. With that, he turned on his heel and strode away, his dogs trailing after him. She scowled as she stood. Her frown deepened when she discovered the captain of the guard smirking as they walked into the fray of, of the readying company. Yeah, he would not be smirking. Mm -hmm. Nothing about his personality thus far has told me he should be smirking at any of this. Mm -hmm. However, the unbearable urge to splatter someone across a wall lessened when they... How the fuck are you going to do that? Lessened when they brought her a piebald mare to ride. She mounted... The sky came closer, and it stretched forever above her, away and away to distant lands she'd never heard of. Selena gripped the saddle horn. She was truly leaving Endovir. All those hopeless months, those freezing nights, gone now. She breathed in deeply. She knew, she just knew, that if she tried hard enough, she could fly from her saddle. That is, until she felt iron clamp around her arms. She does a lot of maladaptive daydreaming, <laughs> like in the, in the middle of times where she really shouldn't be, like riding a horse. Mood. <laughs> the only time I've related. Um, but also, hey, her guilt's gone, so that lasted all of one paragraph. <laughs> Congratulations, guilt assuaged. The guilt flew out, away. Out of sight, out of mind. It was Kale, fastening her bandaged wrist into shackles. A long chain led to his horse, where it disappeared beneath the saddlebags. He mounted his black stallion, and she considered leaping from her horse and using the chain to hang him from the nearest tree. I mean, all he would have to do is, like, dig his heels into the side of that stallion, and you would be dragged. <laughs> and I, she keeps having all these, like, violent imaginings, and I'm like, and then what, bitch? And then what? He's already on a horse. Like, if you jump off of your horse, all he has to do is make that horse start running and you will... It turns into a drag race. <laughs> also, he is the captain of the guard. Kind of bold for her to assume that she could just take him in a straight one-on-one -on -one fight, especially after complaining about how emaciated she is. Like, you don't have the advantage of stealth right now. Yeah, he maybe he you're faster is than him. He's already on high alert because you know everything. <laughs> he's aware of his surroundings. Like maybe you can move faster than him, but again, that but would be not faster than a horse. <laughs> that would be sending a covert unit against a fucking mount a, a cavalry unit. Mm -hmm. The cavalry unit's gonna win. Yeah, undoubtedly. It's, it's, it, it reeks of, oh, my character is so edgy that she could win every single fight. Like, no matter mm -hmm. how big the odds are against her, she wins the fight. She mm -hmm. always rolls a nat 20. Like, it's so like, no. Get the fuck off. It was a rather large company, 20 altogether. Behind two imperial flag-bearing guards rode the prince and Duke Parrington. Parrington, good words. Then came a band of six royal guards, dull and bland as porridge, but still trained to protect him from her. She clanked her chains against her saddle and flicked her eyes to Kaol. He didn't react. The sun rose higher. After one last inspection of their supplies, they left. 
with most of the slaves working the mines and only a few toiling inside the ramshackle refining sheds the giant yard was almost deserted the wall suddenly loomed and her blood throbbed in her veins the last time she'd been this close to the wall the wall the crack of the whip sounded followed by a scream selena looked over her shoulder past the guards and the supply wagon to the near empty yard none of these slaves would ever leave here even when they died each week they dug new mass graves behind the refining sheds and each week those graves filled up that sounds very unsanitary yeah she became all too aware of the three long scars down her back even if she won her freedom even if she lived in peace in the countryside those scars would always remind her of what she'd endured and that even if she was free others were not Okay, good. Are we going to stay on this thought? Are we going to focus on this as a point of character motivation? Of course not. Or, or are we just, you know, putting in the... Oh, but she's not completely selfish. She became... All... Oh, I already read that. Selena faced forward, pushing those thoughts from her mind as they <laughs> entered the passage through the wall. Nope, fuck that. Fuck that. The interior... Fuck them people. The interior was thick, almost smoky thick. and damp. <laughs> The sound of the horses echoed like rolling thunder. The iron gates opened, and she glimpsed the wicked name of the mine before it split in two and swung wide. Within a few heartbeats, the gates groaned shut behind them. She was out. She shifted her hands in their shackles, watching the chains sway and clank between her and the captain of the guard. It was attached to his saddle, which was cinched around his horse, which, when they stopped, could be subtly unbridled, just enough so that with a fierce tug from her end, the chain would rip the saddle off the beast, he'd tumble to the ground, and she would... Okay. I'm, one, appreciating that they're actually describing her thought process in how she would do one of these improbable feats, but also if he is sitting on top of the saddle, that means that she is pulling, one would assume, at least 180 pounds of weight. Yeah, and I mean, he's probably also armored. Yeah, that. So easily 200 pounds. Yeah. Um, so how is After she... After being emaciated and not in shape. Yeah, and like, you know, this first part, suddenly unbridling it and then pulling the chain, okay, under... Yeah, maybe you could do that. You could probably get it unbridled and stuff. I was assuming that she was thinking that the chain would then slip free, not that she was going to pull a saddle off of a horse... With a 200 at least pound rider on top of that saddle. And also like... Because okay. she's like, oh, and then he'll tumble off. Fucking how? Also, just like... You'd have to unbalance him first. Yeah, and also keep in mind that when horseback riding, when you're on the saddle, the, the saddle is also just... It isn't just sat on top of the horse. It is buckled on. Yeah, and like, has, like, a blanket on there to prevent slippage and everything like that. And also, when you're sitting on the saddle, you're supposed to be kind of clenching your legs around the horse. So, he's very purposefully staying on a horse. Because if he was just kind of, you know, dang dangling there, like, wasn't gripping onto the horse, you would just fall off the back. Yeah, and so it's... So, it's like... So yeah, like even if you could get it unbridled, the saddle is not just immediately going to slip off. There are yeah. other precautions in place to prevent that from happening. Yeah. Because it could break. Yeah. You know, it's not impossible, especially if this is a horse and tack that are meant to go into battle. Yeah. There's probably another point where that is cinched and attached yeah usually like around the front of the chest yeah um so yeah no stupid stupid dumb plan at least we get a plan but stupid dumb stupid dumb plan <laughs> and i don't know fucking shit about riding horses i have been to one rodeo exactly <laughs> but just I used, I used to ride horses often <laughs> i did a brief amount of research for a throwaway paragraph in one of my upcoming novellas to understand what each part of tack was and how it works and how it attaches to the horse and what function it has yeah. and even i'm like how the fuck are you gonna accomplish this <laughs> and i spent maybe 10 minutes 
researching that. Yeah. My God. She sensed Captain Westfall's attention. He stared at the at her beneath lowered brows, his lip tightly pursed, and she shrugged as she dropped the chain. As the morning wore on, the sky became a crisp blue with hardly a cloud. Taking the forest road, they swiftly passed from the mountain, mountainous wasteland of Endovir and into fairer country. By mid-morning, they were in within Oakwald Forest, the wood that surrounded Endovir and served as a continental divide between the civilized countries of the east and the uncharted land of the west. Legends were still told of the strange and deadly people who dwelt there, the cruel and bloodthirsty descendants of the fallen witch kingdom. Selena had once met a young woman from that cursed land, and though she turned out to be both cruel and bloodthirsty, she was still just a human and had still blood like one. Okay, a little bit of world building. Nice, thank you. After hours of silence, Selena turned to Kaol. Rumor has it that once the king is finished with his war against Wendlin, he'll begin colonizing the West. She said it casually, but hoped he'd confirm or deny. The more she knew of the king's current position and maneuverings, the better. The captain surveyed her up and down, frowned, and then looked away. <laughs> I agree, she said, sighing loudly. The fate of those empty, wide plains and those miserable mountain regions seems dull to me as well. His jaw tightened as he clamped his teeth. Do you intend to ignore me forever? Captain Westfall's brows rose. I didn't know I was ignoring you. She pursed her lips, checking her irritation. She wouldn't give him the satisfaction. How old are you? Twenty-two. So young, she batted her eyelashes, watching him for some kind of response. It only took a few years to climb the ranks. He nodded. And how old are you? Eighteen. Oh, oh she's sorry, she's 18. eighteen. Still, I wasn't done, you know, developing fully until my mid-twenties, so... Yeah, 20, um, 25 is when puberty generally stops. Yeah, like you're... The big changes will happen in your teen years, but there are still changes going on. Your body is in an ever-constant state of change, as I am becoming aware now in my early 30s, where my body is deciding to, you know, just sort of switch things up on me again and say, hey, you got comfortable with how your flesh prison has been working for the past decade or so? We're going to change that now. (laughs) So... Your body never really stops changing, but to think that she is completely done developing at age 18, and this is not one of those, oh, we need to make it so anyone under 21 is a minor or something like that. It's, your body's going to continue changing. Nah, I'm I'm just over here like, uh, 18-year-old, shut up. (laughs) Shut up, 18-year-old. Infant. (laughs) Not literally, obviously, but, like, I don't know, man. I I can't look at an 18-year-old and not just see a middle schooler. (laughs) Like, the the older you get, the more these ages just look younger and younger, and it's like, oh, that's... Wow, I was stupid at 18. I didn't know shit about shit. I don't think there's a single person who's, like, at their most intelligent at 18 fucking years old. Anywho, moving on. He said nothing. I know, she continued. It is impressive that I accomplished so much at such an early age. Crime isn't an accomplishment, Sardothian. Yes, but becoming the world's most famous assassin is... It's kind of the opposite, actually. He didn't respond. You might ask me how I did it. Did what, he said tightly. Became so talented and famous so quickly. (laughs) I don't want to hear about it. Those weren't the words she wanted to hear. Okay, so she's like the... (laughs) He's gray rocking her right now, and she's going insane because of it. She's all like, I want to brag about myself, and he's like, no. (laughs) Shut up. (laughs) Kaol is quickly becoming my favorite character, (laughs) because she is like that one person in the campaign who wants to be the main character, and he is the one who is staying in character. Yeah. Like... He is lawful good. He doesn't want to talk to the assassin criminal about her crime-ridden history. It is not a topic that he would find interesting. He's just like, nope. (laughs) He's like, I'm here to do my job. Please let me do my job. (laughs) 
please stop talking to me. The fact that you're even in this position around me makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> you're not very kind, she said through her teeth. If she were going to get under his skin, she'd have to push a lot harder. You're a criminal. I'm captain of the Royal Guard. I'm not obligated to bestow any kindness or conversation upon you. Be grateful we don't keep you locked up in the wagon. <laughs> Quit demanding emotional labor of this man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I'd wager that you're rather unpleasant to talk to, even when you're bestowing kindness upon others. My God, she's like one of those guys who, like, texts you, like, hey, beautiful, hey, gorgeous, hey, hey, hey. Why won't you answer your phone? <laughs> and then you're like, I have a boyfriend. And they're like, oh, why do you think I would want to, uh, you're so ugly. <laughs> and starts calling you, like, 20 slurs. That's the energy. Yeah. <laughs> That's what she's giving right now. When he failed to respond again, Selena couldn't help feel a bit foolish. A few minutes passed. Are you and the Crown Prince close friends? My personal life is none of your concern. <laughs> she clicked her tongue. How well born are you? Well enough. His chin lifted almost imperceptibly higher. Duke? No. Lord? He didn't reply and she smiled slowly. Lord Kaol Westfall. She fanned herself with a hand. How the court ladies must fawn over you. Don't call me that. I'm not given the title of Lord, he said quietly. You have an older brother? No. Then why don't you bear the title? Again, no response. She knew she should stop prying, but she couldn't help it. A scandal? A deprived birthright? In what sort of messy intrigue are you involved? His lips squeezed tighter, so... His lips squeezed together so tightly they turned white. She leaned toward him. Do you find that... Shall I gag you, or are you capable of being silent without my assistant? Assistance. He stared ahead at the crown prince, his face blank again. She tried not to laugh when he grimaced as she began speaking again. Are you married? No. She picked at her nails. I'm not married either. His nostrils flared. How old were you when you became captain of the guard? He gripped the reins of his horse. Twenty. The party halted in a clearing, and the soldiers dismounted. She faced Kaol, who swung a leg over his horse. Why have we stopped? Kaol unhooked the chain from his saddle and gave it a firm yank, motioning for her to dismount. Lunch, he said. So Kaol is the best character so far. Yeah. I can't wait for... Because of that, because I actually have some amount of liking toward him... Okay, this would go one of two ways. Either he's the one who gets Tamlin later in the series... Or he is the Lucian of this series, where he is the one character in any given book that I can stand the presence of, and I wish that he was the main. <laughs> like, that's that's the only two ways this can go. See, I'm just over here, like, if they finagle some way to make him the love interest... Oh, please, God, I'm no. going to run for the hills. Because if he's the love interest, then he's going to get Tamlind. Yeah. Which means he's just going to act exactly the same, but all of our interpretation of that behavior is supposed to change to make it negative instead of <laughs> in delightfully endearing like I find him now. Oh my, that was a long one, mostly due to our input. Um, but anyway, that was that. Oh, so no, that was a longer chapter than the last few it ones. It was, were... yeah. It was, they're starting to get longer. Chapter five looks a little shorter. Yeah. So thank you for listening in, and please do leave a like, subscribe to the channel, leave us a comment letting us know, um, I don't know, something, and subscribe to the Patreon. Do tell, tell us what kind of Barbie you are. <laughs> you can get more access to chapters faster if you subscribe, so fucking do it. But yeah, in the comments, tell us what kind of Barbie you are. <laughs> Have a good evening. Bye. Thank you so much for watching, and a special thank you to my patrons. If you'd like to see your name here or in the description below, please consider joining my Patreon. Your support means so much to me and allows me to continue making content. If you want to support my content in different ways, consider buying my books, donating on coffee, subscribing to the channel, or even just giving this video a like and comment. Any and everything is appreciated so much. Keep growing till next time, Rose Garden!